Sometimes that coolant just doesn't do a good enough job of keeping that engine cool. So the question is, do these coolant additives, which are supposed to lower engine temperatures by 30 degrees, actually work? Well, let's find out. We'll use this tester I put together to see which product does the best job at removing heat. Then we'll see if any of the products cause corrosion. We'll also compare the boiling and freezing points. At a price of only $8, is this Rizlone Hypercool. Reduces engine temperature by up to 25 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent engine overheating. Lubricates and protects water pump seals. Helps prevent corrosion of all metals commonly found in cooling systems, including aluminum. Up to 75 degrees cooler cylinder head temperature. And the Rizlone Hypercool is made in USA. Since most of the products claim to prevent corrosion, let's test the reserve alkalinity of the products next. I'll go ahead and measure out 50 milliliters of water into the test cup. Let's see what the pH of the water is first. And the pH of 6.49 is definitely too low for a cooling system and will cause corrosion over time. Let's add just one drop of sulfuric acid to the water. I'll stir the water to make sure that the acid is mixed well with the water. And with just one drop of sulfuric acid, the pH of the water is now at 2.08. And that's some highly corrosive water. I'll be using the peak antifreeze for the products that are designed to be blended with antifreeze. Never any sponsors, I bought everything for this review, including the antifreeze. Let's test the peak antifreeze coolant next. It's sold as pre-mixed and ready to use. And the peak antifreeze has a baseline pH of 8.47. Reserve alkalinity indicates how much alkaline buffer or inhibitors are present to neutralize acids that can form from normal engine operation. So let's add just one drop of sulfuric acid to the antifreeze and thoroughly mix the acid into the antifreeze. A higher reserve alkalinity generally means that a coolant can better fend off acid buildup and protect metal surfaces from corrosion. And the the freeze is now at 6.26, which is a lot better than the water, which is at 2.08. Let's go ahead and mix up a half gallon of peak antifreeze and give it a boost with Rizlone Hypercool. I'll add two ounces of Rizlone as indicated by the instructions. And the Rizlone seems to have done a good job of mixing in with the antifreeze. I'll use a new syringe with each product and I'll add right at 50 milliliters into the test cup. And Rizlone is starting off with a pH of 8.47, the same as a straight antifreeze. Let's add one drop of sulfuric acid to the antifreeze that's boosted with Rizlone additive. And the Rizlone seems to be helping strengthen the antifreeze's reserve alkalinity just a little with a pH of 6.39 compared to 6.26 for the straight antifreeze. At a price of $10, is this DEI radiator relief. Allows your engine to run up to 30 degrees cooler. Combats both electrolytic as well as chemical corrosion. Reduces existing scale buildup, acting as a corrosion inhibitor to keep your engine running longer. Protects against radiator core damage. And the DEI radiator relief is made in USA. Add one ounce for each quart of capacity. And the DEI radiator relief seems to have done a good job of mixing with the antifreeze. And the Rizlone had a pH of 8.47 and the DEI relief has a pH of 8.57. After just one drop of sulfuric acid, the DEI relief moves into the lead with a pH of 6.42. At a price of $16, is this VP Racing cool down. Runs up to 30 degrees cooler. Reduces cylinder head temperature by up to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Lubricates all vital components. We're going to test that. Ideal for racing, street, RVs, and tow vehicles. They claim it's safe for all radiator systems. And a VP Racing is made in USA. Adding VP Racing additive to the antifreeze actually brought down the pH from 8.47 to 8.32. So it's still in very good shape. Which is one drop of sulfuric acid, the VP Racing is now at 6.44, the best yet. At a price of $17, is this Royal Purple Ice? Up to 25 degrees Fahrenheit cooler. Fights corrosion, electrolysis, and erosion. Contains lubricants to protect the water pump. Made in USA. The instructions indicate to use one to two ounces per quart. And the Royal Purple blended nicely with the antifreeze. Adding Royal Purple to the antifreeze lowered the pH by a very small amount from 8.47 to 8.42. Which is one drop of sulfuric acid, the Royal Purple moves into the lead at 6.51. At a price of $26, is this Engine Ice brand. The Engine Ice came in a container that did not have a whole lot of information on the container. It does have a small label at the top indicating what it is. It has boil over protection up to 256 degrees Fahrenheit. Freeze up protection to minus 28 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Engine Ice has the highest baseline alkalinity yet at 9.04, which is perfectly fine for a cooling system. Which is one drop of sulfuric acid, the pH is down to 6.44, same as the VP Racing. A second product that we'll be testing by VP Racing is the Stay Frosty product for a price of $34. Now this product will not protect against freeze-ups is a 100% water-based formula. They claim you can reduce engine temperatures by up to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Meets ASTM corrosion standards. Contains lubricants to protect the water pump. And the VP Racing is made in USA. And the VP Racing Stay Frosty is the least alkaline product yet with a baseline pH of right at 8. And the single drop of sulfuric acid made quite an impact on the VP Racing with a pH of 5.84, the most acidic coolant yet. At a price of $48, is this Mishimoto's Liquid Chill? It's a 50-50 pre-mixed, ready-to-use product. They claim this product reduces engine wear. They claim it inhibits corrosion and seals pinhole leaks. 
All radiator types, all gasoline engines, all diesel engines, year-round use. Boil over temperature up to 265 degrees Fahrenheit. Freeze up to minus 26. And the Liquid Chill is made in USA. And the Liquid Chill has a baseline pH of 8.14, which is lower than most of the other brands. However, the Liquid Chill has by far the best reserve alkalinity yet at 6.9 with only one drop of sulfuric acid. At a price of $50, is this red line super cool? They claim it's fortified with water wetter. Reduces temps by up to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a 50-50 pre-diluted antifreeze. Ready to use, do not add water. It's supposed to last five years or 150,000 miles. And the red line is made in USA. And the Red Line Super Cool has an initial pH of 8.25, which is a little bit more alkaline than the Liquid Chill. And the Red Line did a great job of neutralizing the acids at 6.87, but the Liquid Chill holds on to the lead at 6.9. At a price of $52, is this Evans brand. It's a high-performance waterless engine coolant. They claim it boils over at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, protects to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, eliminates engine hot spots, fights corrosion, and lowers pressure. And the Evans is made in USA. Andy Evans Waterless has a baseline pH of 8.42, which is very close to the same pH of the peak antifreeze. With just one drop of sulfuric acid, the Evans Waterless is by far the best yet at 7.9. Very impressive. All of the products except for the water had an acceptable pH of 8 or higher. Water started off at 6.49, which is likely to cause corrosion as well as other issues over time. After just one drop of sulfuric acid, the Evans Wireless still has plenty of alkalinity to be safely used in a vehicle's cooling system. Liquid Chill finished in a distant second place with a pH of 6.9 and Redline Super Cool third with a pH of 6.87. Just about all the products outperformed the peak antifreeze. Before we test the boiling point of each of the products, let's kick off our next test for measuring the freezing point. I'll set the freezer to ride at minus 27 degrees Fahrenheit, which works out to minus 32.7 degrees Celsius. We'll check back on this in about 12 hours. Let's test the boiling point of each of the products next. I'll be using a thermometer that came with a certificate of calibration. I purchased a dozen flasks, so I'll use a different flask with each additive. I'll measure out approximately 150 milliliters of each product. As you'd expect, the water has a boiling point of very close to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And the peak antifreeze outperformed the water by 16.5 degrees at 228.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And the peak antifreeze boosted by the Ruslone Hypercool performed even better at 233.3 degrees. And the peak antifreeze that's boosted by the DEI relief didn't perform quite as well as the Ruslone at 230.1 degrees Fahrenheit. And the peak antifreeze boosted by the VP Racing Additive performed the same as the DEI relief at 230.1 degrees. And the Royal Purple boosted by the antifreeze performed about the same as the unboosted antifreeze at 228.5 degrees. And the engine ice boils at a lower temperature than the peak antifreeze at 225.4 degrees. And the VP Racing State Frosty is boiling at very close to the same temperature as the water at 212.4 degrees. And the Liquid Chill is boiling at a peak temperature of 223.5 degrees or about 5 degrees cooler than the antifreeze. And the Red Line Super Cool performed even better than the peak antifreeze at 229 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Evans Waterless is outperforming the competition by over 100 degrees at 388 degrees Fahrenheit. Very impressive! So the Evans Waterless came out on top at very close to 388 degrees Fahrenheit at atmospheric pressure. Rizlon finished in second place at 233.3. DEI relief and the VP racing additive finished in third at 230.1. A radiator under pressure will add about 30 to 40 degrees to the boiling point for each of the products. All of the coolants have been in the freezer overnight, so let's check in on them. And all the products are very cold at close to minus 27 degrees Fahrenheit. All of the products stayed in liquid form except for the VP racing stay frosty, which is completely frozen. So I'll go ahead and remove it from the competition. Let's go ahead and make the freezer a little bit colder and we'll check back on these coolants later in the video. A very important role for antifreeze is to lubricate the water pump and or water pump seals. So let's go ahead and test that next using this lubricity tester that I put together several years ago. Antifreeze has a lot less film strength compared to motor oil, so I'll be using half the weight on the tester as well as I'll shorten the duration of the test. Once the pin is in position, I'll make sure that both the pin as well as the wheel are coated in antifreeze to avoid a dry start. The energy use meter will keep track of the amount of energy needed to keep the test wheel moving. And there's quite a bit of friction taking place at around 530 watts at the start of the test. And the test is over, so let's take a closer look at the test pin under the microscope. To get an accurate measurement, I'll use the microscope to measure the size of the wear scar. And the peak antifreeze performed well with the wear scar of 6.36 millimeters. Between these tests, I'll clean the test wheel and I'll resurface the test wheel on the tester with sandpaper. According to the energy use meter, the Rizlone boosted antifreeze seems to be experiencing a little bit more friction at the start of the test. However, it's still pretty close to the same amount as the peak antifreeze. A close look under the microscope and the size of the wear scar is just a small amount larger at 6.42 millimeters. The antifreeze test pin is on the left and the Rizlone is on the right. 
And it's very close, but the unboosted peak antifreeze is performing just a little bit better. And the antifreeze that's been boosted with a good dose of DEI relief is starting off about the same as the Rizlone. So these coolant additives don't seem to be hurting the lubrication properties of the antifreeze too much so far. Rizlone is on the left, and the DEI relief is on the right, and the Rizlone has a little smaller wear scar. And the DEI relief trails the Rizlone by just a little with the wear scar of 6.48 millimeters compared to 6.42 for the Rizlone. And the VP Racing seems to be a little bit slicker than the Rizlone, and the DEI relief starting off the test with a little bit lower energy use. And the VP Racing performed better than the Rizlone and the DEI at 6.4 millimeters, but not quite as good as the antifreeze. DEI Relief is on the left, and the VP Racing is on the right. It's very close, but the VP Racing performed a little bit better. And the antifreeze boosted with the Royal Purple Additive is performing about the same as the VP Racing on the energy use meter. So none of the products so far seem to be hurting the lubricity of the antifreeze. And the VP Racing is on the left, and the Royal Purple is on the right. And the test pins both measure right at 6.4 millimeters. And the Engine Ice is the first product that we'll be testing that's not an additive and comes as a ready-to-use coolant. And the energy use meter isn't noticing too much of a difference between the VP Racing and the Engine Ice. So far, none of the products are performing too much different than the Peak Antifreeze. And the Royal Purple's on the left and the Engine Ice is on the right. And the Engine Ice test pin experienced a little bit more damage at 6.49 millimeters. And the VP Racing stay frosty has a pretty low boiling point at around 212 degrees Fahrenheit. It also seems to have a lower viscosity compared to most of the other brands. The Engine Ice is on the left and the VP Racing stay frosty is on the right and it's very close but the vp racing did a little bit better at 6.45 millimeters and the liquid chill seems to be starting off the smoothest of all the brands so far and the energy use meter seems to agree with less energy use and the vp racing stay frosty is on the left and the liquid chill is on the right and the liquid chill has the smallest wear scar so far at only 6.09 millimeters Redline seems just as slick as the liquid chill and is off to a really smooth start. And the energy use meter is looking really good at the start of the test. And it's liquid chill on the left and red line on the right. And this one's extremely close, but the liquid chill barely edges out the red line by 0.01 millimeters. And the Evans Wireless has a very high viscosity, which sometimes helps. And the Evans seems to be performing reasonably well according to the energy use meter. And red line is on the left and Evans is on the right. And the red line obviously performed quite a bit better than the Evans. So the liquid chill came out on top at 6.09 millimeters. Redline performed about as good as the liquid chill at 6.1 millimeters. Fortunately, all of the products offer plenty of lubrication for those water pump seals. And the coolants have been in the freezer for an additional eight hours. And the engine ice is now frozen at around minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which works out to around minus 35.5 degrees Celsius. And all the products are beginning to crystallize except for the Evans and the Peak Antifreeze. It's been an additional eight hours and all the coolants are very close to minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And the antifreeze and the Evans are still in liquid form. There's a few crystals at the top of the Rizlone, but the top third of the DEI relief is crystallized. And the VP Racing looks about the same as the DEI Relief. The Royal Purple is close to the same as the VP Racing. And it's definitely over for the engine ice. A few crystals at the top of the chill. And two thirds of the red line is crystallized. And the Evans is still looking good. Back in the freezer and we'll check on these a little later. I put together this next piece of test equipment to compare the ability of the coolants as a heat exchange. The coolants will start out inside the coolant reservoir which has a heating element. A water pump will move the coolants from the reservoir to the bottom hose on the heater core. As the coolant enters the heater core, a thermometer will keep track of the temperature of the liquid. After the liquid exits the heater core at the top of the unit, another thermometer reading will take place. We'll measure the difference in temperature drops at several points. Directly behind the heater core is a cooling fan that will move air across the heater core. Let's start off the test with antifreeze to serve as our control. The test will begin once the coolant exiting the top of the heater core is at least 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And the antifreeze entering the coolant is now at 115 degrees and it's exiting the heater core at 3.8 degrees cooler at 111.2. And the coolant is now at 110.1 degrees entering the heater core and it's at 106.5 exiting or 3.6 degrees difference. At 105.1 degrees is a 3.3 degree difference. So if we add up the three temperature differences at the three points we measured, the antifreeze has a combined temperature difference of 10.7 degrees. Let's test the Rizlone boosted antifreeze next. And the Rizlone is performing quite a bit better than the unboosted antifreeze with a 6.1 degree temperature drop at 115.3 degrees. And there's a 4.9 degree difference at 109.8. And there's a 3.4 degree difference at 105.1. So the Rizlone did a whole lot better than the antifreeze with a 14.4 degree difference compared to 10.7 for the antifreeze. Most of these products reduce engine temperature through use of high cloud point surfactants. These surfactants lower the surface temperature of the water or the coolant mixture, which improves its ability to wet surfaces and improve heat transfer. And it's a 5.7 degree temperature difference at 115.3 degrees. At around 110.1 degrees, there's a 4.8 degree difference between the coolant going into the heater core and the coolant coming out. At 104.9, there's a 3.8 degree difference for a total of 14.3, which is about the same as the Rizlone. And the VP Racing is off to a strong start with a 6 degree temperature drop at 115.
At 110.1, there's a 5.7 degree difference in temperature. And a 3.8 degree temperature difference at around 105 is about the same as a DEI relief for a total score of 15.5 to move into the lead. And Royal Purple is about the same as a VP Racing with a 5.6 degree difference at 115. There's a 4.5 degree difference at around 110. And a 5.1 degree difference at around 105. And the Royal Purple has a total score of 15.2 to move into second place. And the engine ice is off to a really strong start with a 7.2 degree difference at 115. And a 5 degree difference at around 110 is still strong. And a 4 degree difference at around 105 and the engine ice moves into the lead with a score of 16.2 degrees. And the VP Racing Stay Frosty is off to an impressive start with a 6.3 degree difference at 115. And the VP Racing Stay Frosty is doing the best job yet with a 6.6 .6 degree difference at around 110. And a 6.1 degree difference around 105 and the VP Racing Stay Frosty moves into the lead with a score of 19. And the Liquid Chill is performing well with a 4.9 degree temperature difference at around 115. And there's a 6.3 degree difference at around 110. And a 6.3 degree difference at around 105 for a total score of 17.5 degrees is the second best yet. And the Red Line has a 7.1 degree difference at around 115. And a 5.7 degree difference at 110.1 is pretty good. And a 4.3 degree difference at 105 is about the same as the Liquid Chill. At around 115.7 there's a 2.9 degree temperature difference with the Evans. At 110.1 there's a 3.9 degree difference and a 3.6 degree difference around 105 for a total score of 10.4. So the VP Racing Stay Frosty came out on top with a cumulative temperature difference of 19 degrees. Liquid Chill finished in second place at 17.5 and Redline third at 17.1. Without the presence of water the Evans performed very close to the same as a regular antifreeze and it's been several hours and minus 47 degrees Fahrenheit seems to be as cold as this freezer will go. And all of the coolants in the antifreeze are now frozen but the Evans is still in liquid form. So the Evans has a crystallization point that's colder than minus 47 degrees Fahrenheit. The unboosted peak antifreeze crystallizes around minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Most of the other brands begin forming crystals around minus 32. So which coolant additive is the best? The right side of the chart includes the graded categories. All of the additives offer a very safe initial pH and should not cause corrosion. And the Redline Super Cool came in on top with the best average finish of 3.2. However, the Liquid Chill finished in a very close second place with an average finish of 3.4. The VP Racing Additive seems like a very affordable way to go and it performed well with an average finish at 4th place in each event. Evans Waterless does not claim to lower engine operating temperatures by 20 to 30 degrees like the other products. However, I did include it in this review since I've had a ton of requests to compare it anyway. It does offer the best freezing and boiling point and absorbs acid the best. So just about all the products perform better than the antifreeze when it comes to the heat exchange process and in many categories of the testing. All the reviews on this channel are viewers suggested so if you have a video idea I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.